Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch Movie. I am Mike, and I saw a movie called Cuckoo. I think it's called Cuckoo, or is it Cuckoo? Is it Cuckoo, like, you know, Rob Zombie? Or is it, like, Cuckoo, like Cuckoo Clock? Either way, I already sound like an idiot, so let's just go with Cuckoo. I saw this movie, and I was very excited about it, because I didn't know anything about it. I think maybe we did a Patreon stream at one point. Sometimes we'll just go live, and I'll watch all the upcoming horror movie trailers, and I think I might have saw something there. All I remember was a person with a bandage on their head running away from something scary. That's all I know about the movie at all. And this will be a totally spoiler review for you as well, so that you can do that if you want to. But I was super excited to finally go to a horror movie again, knowing nothing about it. I rarely get to do that these days, because, you know, covering the news and all that stuff like that that we do. And I was so disappointed with what ended up happening. So uh, I'll give you the bare bones version of this story. It is about a 17 year old who is very unhappy, who has trauma and is antisocial, who's of course moving and they're moving all the way to Germany so that the stepdad and his new wife and their daughter can work at this resort and build a new resort for this guy who's played by Dan Stevens, the wonderful, amazing Dan Stevens, who's in The Guest. He's in a bunch of stuff. He's like a comedian. I think he might be Satan if you just look into his eyes really deeply. He's an amazing actor, though. He was in Abigail. Sammy, those are fucking onions. That dude, he's just... I'm so sick and tired of people using him poorly as an actor. He's such a good actor, and I'm so sick of watching his talents go to waste, as they do in Kukok. Here, <laughs> he has this crazy German accent in this movie, and it's so friggin' good, man. Like, the accent is so good, and he provides all these mo moments of black comedy, and just, like, the way he'll do something. Like, if you've seen the movie, you'll know there's a thing that he does. And just even this physical comedy to the way he uses his accent. There's a funny moment in uh, Human Centipede where Dieter Laser runs in there. Uh, rest in peace. Dieter Laser runs in there and he's chasing somebody. He goes, I will cut you at your knees. And it's not that over the top, but it just reminds me of that. The way he uses his accent to just really bring some comedy to it. Kind of the way Christoph Waltz was sometimes funny, even though he was in a really fucked up role in... And Glorious Bastards, it's sort of kind of what Dan Stevens does here. But he's super charismatic as well. And you can just tell that he's a guy that people get intoxicated by. So the 17-year-old Gretchen goes there, who's played by Hunter Schaefer, and does a great job. I think everybody in the movie is really good, to be honest with you, acting-wise. It was, it was really good. But I watched a movie called Stop Motion earlier this year, and I complained about the same thing. I don't know why we have to have all horror leads who have trauma in their life and have this backstory uh, have to be, like, super just kind of the same sort of character just like like I don't talk to anybody I barely speak I'm I'm, I'm you know I'm the rodent in the wall type of thing that's fine and I understand that people are like that but it seems like it happens over and over and over again in horror movies I feel like characters can have trauma and can be a little fucked up and also have a, a, an over-the-top personality like the most extreme version I could think about that is Deadpool obviously we're not talking about that here but that's just an example you know what I mean like I feel like we can have characters that don't have to be so sullen just because they have tragedy in their past and they're going through something doesn't mean they always like mope around or like this when somebody talks to them there's a wide variety of trauma and like ways that people react to that kind of stuff so I don't know I'm just sort of sick of that trope and horror a little bit and while this this character's not that bad at all. There is some more interesting things to him than in a movie like Stop Motion, where she just walks around like, mmm, the whole fucking movie. Um, that was a little bit annoying. But for sure, characters like Dan Stevens make up for it. There's a, a private investigator character in this who's just off the wall, over the top. Reminds me of Viggo Mortensen in the way that this character can be super serious and crying and the next moment be cackle laughing. And you're like, who's the what the fuck? So I, I enjoyed that. And I enjoyed kind of the anarchy about this movie and the cinematography was great, and the location was cool, and it had all the trappings of something cool. But man, this story sucked. This story sucked butt cracks from Niall. It was such a bad story. Like, make a decision. I know that you're trying to be artsy-fartsy and croissant as you can, but make a decision. Pick what this movie's gonna be back and stick to something. There's one scary character in this, uh, and the movie does provide a, a, a couple maybe three decent scares in it for sure uh one of them was set up to be really good and it was the first one and it didn't didn't come for like a while in the movie it felt like but it comes to the point where you're in the last act of the movie and you go all right still waiting to see what this movie's about fuck me with the sour patch kid i that would actually be really painful is it gritty there's i don't want to be fucked with anything to be honest with you listen to me what i'm trying to say is the 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 story is 
all over the place. It was grasping desperately for straws and to have meaning and to have purpose. And it just didn't. I didn't connect to anything on this. This was, I don't know why we're docking with our fingers. Wow, what a dumb story. And when it ends, you go, that was even done. Like this movie thought it was directed by Luke Besson at one point at the end. It tried to do some Fifth Element type stuff. Fifth Element, if it was in a haunted house. I don't know. I just, <sighs> man. What a waste of great acting, of great cinematography. Uh, and again, this character that they had that they were using for, for some decent scares, that they had some stuff going with them. Even that, once they focused on it and showed it a little bit, it was like, oh man, that seemed like it was going to be really scary. And now it just kind of looks like, you know, someone went crazy at the Goodwill and bought everything they could and just put on a bunch of clothes and like a bonnet and was just like running around like, mm -hmm, ha ha ha. Like with some, that was so disappointing because that thing that they were showing in the beginning that they you see I guess a little bit in the marketing maybe I think I saw a glimpse of it before somewhere uh it, it looks so scary at first sight unseen like you're like oh wow what's that can't wait to find out what's going on there it's dumb as shit and then you look at it and it just looks like it it, it looks like a, a blonde lady going to the beach but for some reason is wearing a trench coat and sunglasses like they managed to take it and make it as not scary as possible by the end of the movie and then everybody just acting dumb and the movie's trying so hard to be croissant and you're just like this is some dumb shit like this story is dumb as fuck rocks but yeah, uh, is gonna be a 5 out of 10 for me. I totally understand it if you enjoyed it. I think some people enjoy weird fuck shit just because it's weird fuck shit. And if that's you, I think you will absolutely adore this movie. So definitely go see it. Don't take my word for it, as always. Go see the movie. I guess it makes sense if you can contort your brain into a, a fucking pretzel at goat yoga. I don't know what I'm even saying anymore. But yeah, just a bad, bad story. Um... That really had stuff going for it. It had some cool music in it, too. And the way that they would film the very few action scenes in this, the filming was really cool. Like, it, it kind of made you feel like you, that you were in their shoes. And it was kind of fucked up and gnarly. And I liked that. And good music. Uh, but, yeah, it's a 5 out of 10 for me. Because it was just a bunch of good shit and just a nonsense pot of poo. So, directly down the middle we go. That is my review of Cuckoo. I hope you enjoyed it. It's probably Cuckoo. Fuck! And we'll be live tonight on the Patreon at 8 p.m. Eastern. If you're in that tier, uh, you guys should check it out. You can check it. You can try the tier for free if you want to and, and join us tonight, Saturday night at 8 o'clock. Um, there's a link below for the Patreon where you can try it for free. And we do, uh, we listen to some music. We do beer chugs with a couple of you guys. We play a little bit of music. We're going to play a little Xbox tonight, I think, maybe. So if we can get it to work. So yeah, join us. Um, and uh, I love your fucking faces. I hope you guys have an amazing day, and we'll see you soon. Hello, listener. Do you like scary movies? What's your favorite scary movie? Well, Jay and Mike like scary movies, too. You should go and subscribe to their podcast. We watched a movie. Because if you don't, I'll gut you like a... Well, I think you get the idea. Enjoy yourselves. Why you still can.